Yeah. Any uh, question you'd like to pose somewhat facetiously? But, uh, you said in the interview that when the breakout hit 88, you kind of uh, started a celebration already because uh, you were surprised it would hit the charts that high. Oh. Um, what about the album? What does that have to hit before you to start decide to have a part of this? Team? We didn't get the chance actually. That was one of the uh, strange things, you know, because usually uh, I never understood the album charts, and apparently, having learned about it now, you, you go in as high as you're going to go in England now. And, and then you drop gradually, so it was. Uh, we never got the chance to get drunk with the album because it went straight. That's right, went straight to the top. Yeah, uh -huh. which was a pity because you know we could have done with a drink. That's right. Come on, come on. So we're chancing at the moment. Hats to the one. Ah, no, no. So, 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 one. Ah, no, they were hoping that it might do that, but I don't think they really anticipated it doing quite that well. You know, so. But the single was received that well. I mean, you must have had some sort of. Uh, um, I idea. suppose so, but there was quite a big gap between the first single, the, you know, breakout, and then the album. It was quite a few months after. Mm -hmm. so, you know, you always think that people will have forgotten all about you by that time. So it was. Uh, hmm. I mean, we were completely taken aback. I think it would be the opposite, you know, because there's that much of a blank between the single and the album, people are really waiting with yeah. bated breath. For the I think we're just naturally pessimistic, yeah. so, you know, we can always read the dark side into whatever event happens. Mm -hmm. I also think um, when it's you actually experiencing it yourself, somehow it takes the, the magic away. I mean, you think it's a real achievement looking from the outside when somebody's got a number one album, but when it's yourself, it kind of, well it just makes you think maybe it's not that much of an achievement after all. And I do think the kind of climate of the album charts has changed somewhat and it's maybe getting more like the American charts where singles are kind of more or less like an advertising campaign but more people will buy albums. I think judging by a lot of new bands who've surfaced about the same time as us, they've done a similar thing so it kind of doesn't seem such a great achievement. Yes, you think so? I mean, I think it would be the way around. I mean, in America, it seems to be a, a, a case of uh, people putting out albums rather than just singles. Mm. You, know, you can't get by with, with, it, with this, only a single, it has to be a good album. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd prefer that. Because uh -huh. I think, I mean, regardless of what I think about singles, I like them, but when you, when you think about your contemporaries, when you look through particularly the English charts, there's just so much rubbish. Yeah, well, it's like they have their one song act or two yeah. song yeah. act, and that's it. It's not. It, I, I don't really think it's worth competing anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's there's sort of novelty records that go straight to number exactly. one, and think, exactly. you think, well, what's that's the point like in bothering? Yeah. Whereas at least with the album charts, it's unlikely that <laughs> something so uh, what's the word? So frivolous. Frivolous. Thank you. Yes, is is going to get in there. You know? uh -huh. So I prefer the album charts. Mm -hmm. フィルミングにはそこは。そうですね。シングルでピーノなんてのは、その間のカウントが、なんだかんだ。シングルは大体、え、受けたりも書かれてる。ピーが、その、もう忘れられてないからと。もう考えて、じゃあ、反対じゃ
I think it's a shame, personally. I think it, that I was having, I don't know whether it's quite the same for Karen, but I think it is to a degree. I think it spoils it, really, because you become a bit sort of blasé. You know, yeah, because you just sort of, you get on with it rather than, I mean, maybe five or six years ago, I think we'd have enjoyed it a lot more than we do. Mm, that's interesting. Really. Because, just because, simply because I think you've, you become that involved in the whole thing, you know, the whole business and every, everything else, that it's hard to be sort of that naively enthusiastic about it, if you like. And that's it. I don't know. I mean, I think if this had happened to us five or six years ago, we'd probably made a lot of mistakes that we'd regretted. I mean, there's no... No, I'm saying we'd have enjoyed it more, though. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm. I'm sure we wouldn't have coped with it well. But. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I prefer not enjoying it so much and being able to... Uh, be quite level-headed about it and and do what we want to do rather than probably if we were a bit younger. I mean, it's good that we we're kind of experienced and can take it in our stride rather than if we were too in awe of it all. We'd probably get swept into the kind of clutches of the record company and be pushed maybe into doing things we didn't want to. So where that is a disadvantage, I think the advantage is probably better. Hmm. Seems like you're kind of holding back, saying, let's not get too happy about this. That's these two, they've rubbed off on me because they come from Manchester. Yeah, and I, just, I just think it's just... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I take the point of view because it, it's true, because we're, we were a lot more sensible about it than we would have been a few years ago. But I can't help feeling that it's a shame, because I can remember doing things with magazine, like doing Top of the Pops and not being able to sleep the night before. And I miss that, you know, I really wish I could be that. <laughs> excited about that's just a sort of personal yeah you know. do you think there's anything that you'd be capable of doing now in terms of handling the success that you wouldn't have been able to do say five or six years oh yeah i mean i think i think your know, whole attitude is different do you think that makes a difference is that right? yeah i mean i think it's any, any well. steps you take you would take now that you wouldn't have taken back then um in terms of you know uh, Sustaining your popularity, sustaining your success. I think you can say no to a lot more things, like you know, because... Like promotional... Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think if, if we were a lot younger, you'd be so kind of enthusiastic about everything, you'd probably just think, oh, great, brilliant. But, I mean, I think you can kind of think one step ahead, being this much older, because you can sort of foresee the consequences of doing certain things, and, and things that might imme immediately seem quite a good idea. I mean, we've already learnt a few little things along the way, even though we think we're so sensible, you know. I think it, you, you're just a lot more wary about things, and you can turn things down, which even, you know, we're forever being told, oh, you shouldn't turn that down, that's really good. Mm -hmm. But then you turn it down and you find, I mean, this is one of the problems, really, because you, in a way you get sucked up in this sort of tornado effect, you know, where everything is just a whirl, which it has been for about the last six or seven months. And it's difficult to sort of stand back objectively and say, no, we shouldn't do that, and we shouldn't do that. And things can become really important. But then if you, you can reject something and that, you've forgotten it a day later, you know, it's, it's, hard to, you know, it's hard to stand back sometimes. I think that's, that's the most difficult part. And I'm sure if, if we were younger, we'd probably just do everything and, and regret it. You know, I mean, we've done a lot of things I think we've regretted, particularly on the dodgy promotional front. You know. But... Uh, so are they? あの、ケビン、ケビンがあるんだよね。その、うちとてにもう、ならないから、そのままないっていうね。マージンに入った時はまだ若かったしね。トップオブザポップスに出るそのマイナバーもそんなに出れなかったんだけど、今はでも割と
albums and whatever, and, and I probably in that time made more and sold less than probably anyone I've ever met who's ever made a record, you know, and you, and you, get, you start feeling like you, you make up all these justifications why, oh, my records don't sell because, you know, this is too, you know, and you, you start sort of going over people's heads and pretending that there's something that people aren't understanding. And I think really the, the main thing that we got out, well, I got out of this was just the fact that for once in your life, you know, people did actually buy what I'd done, you know, which is, uh, I thought it was one of those things that never would never happen, you know, it was just like that was how it's supposed to be, you know, you're striving towards that and it never comes, you know. So now I'm a bit confused really because I don't know, once people have bought, that was my main objective really, just for people to buy the thing, you know? <laughs> so I don't know where to go now. <laughs> yeah, you've achieved your goal, yeah. you have nowhere else to go. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 自分ほどレコードを作って自分ほど売れなかったあの水島いなかっただろうって感じるんだけどそれでやっとレコードが売れるようになったらもうその目標を達,しあの達成したからねもうこれからもう一体どうするかってもう東方にく,く,く,あのく,く,くれてるっていうかもうどうすればいいかわからないあその分析についてはどういう点が起きたのと思いますかっていう What do you think、um, has caught the, the fans of the public about the regression? I have no idea. Probably, I mean, we probably like to think different things than is actually the case, so I don't think about it very much.、Mm -hmm. Because if I, I think if you did ponder on why people were paying attention to it, it probably wouldn't, it would be very superficial, you know, in most cases. But then, as long as you don't know the truth, you can always imagine <laughs> and think, oh, people obviously have a lot of taste. But I, I think for the most part, it's just probably some sort of silly marketing that's, you know, or the fact that the current's haircut or whatever, you know. It's,、uh, But then I'd rather not know about that. As long as people buy it and as long as I can pretend that they enjoy it, <laughs> I don't mind. How about you, Victor? What do you think? I'm left to agree with that, really. I think it's.、Um, it's, uh, I think it's, a bit, it's a bit like politics. It's always the lowest common denominator. I, mean, I remember doing things at college where we did studies of, why, of how people voted and why they voted. It's a bit like buying records. And you find that they. People would vote for one politician because they thought he was ni a nicer looking person than the other one. You know, I, I think you can fool yourself into thinking that people buy it because they think it's a marvelous, innovative piece of music or something, but at the end of the day, you probably find there's a minority that buy it for that reason. So, like Andy said, I, I think I'd rather not know. I'd just rather you know, wish that they bought it for the right reasons. I mean, it's just nice that people hear it, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's, I mean, I had the same sort of thing as Andy.、I, Really, sort of after a magazine, it's a case of、uh, working, making records that were selling, you know, to probably two or three people. And so it's quite nice to, to actually have people listening. And, I mean, it's really nice to see them in the shops over here. I think that means more to me than sort of chart positions and things, really. I would agree with what they both said to a certain extent, but I think also, I mean, no matter how much we'd like to try and avoid it all. Disregard it.、Uh, the image thing does come into account, but not necessarily from a, a fashion or a cult or whatever point of view. I think just the way、uh, that we've put ourselves across and made ourselves available or accessible to all types of people, which some people may consider is kind of selling out and, and appealing to the lowest common denominator. We did, when we started out,、uh, make a point of not trying to. Have the kind of elitist appeal that people had labeled us as having, which is, you know, saying we're, we belong to Soho and we're a kind of trendy people's wine bar band. I mean, that, as far as we're concerned, is a, an insult rather than a compliment, which I think people, journalists in particular, thought they were paying us by saying that. I mean, we started out, our very first television appearance was on the Roland Rat Show, which I don't know if,、uh, you know, I think that could be. The worst move, but at the same time, the best move because it's making yourself available to people and not trying to cut any section of the community out, you know, as far as listening to your music is concerned. And we did from that end of the scale, which is like a children's program, but it kind of was renowned for having our music put on it, to the other end of the scale, which was、uh, the Wogan Show, which is, I don't know, is it like David Letterman or something? It's、oh, not as trendy as that. No, it's not. No, it's more like、uh, the Johnny Carson show. An older person's chat show、yeah. where it's a more kind of middle age appeal, parents. And, but that also has a music spot, which, you know, it, it opens up your, your scope a bit, I think. But at the same time, it, 
I don't think we've excluded the people that we would want to hear our music as well, like like-minded people to us. Mm -hmm. But you said you didn't like to be considered trendy. Um, why, why is that an insult? Well, because I, I think that's a very superficial thing and there's a lot more depth to our music than a, lo a lot of music, particularly in the singles market, produced by people who want to be renowned for that. And I think because that's such a common thing in England at the moment, we've kind of got lumped in with that lot for a while. Uh, maybe it's the fact that I come from London and, or whatever, and they, Martin and Andy were getting tagged with that same label. And I mean, they do the bulk of the musical side of it, so it was, as far as I was concerned, more of a, an insult because, you know, they'd never set foot inside trendy wine bars and all these things. Mm. That, I, think, know, I think the main, the main problem with it is I, I wouldn't mind if it was quite a widespread thing, but the, the trendy idea is such a small circle of people in London who sort of decide these things. You know, it really is. It's probably less than 20 people. And, I mean, that, you know, it's, that's ridiculous. It's like, I can't think of a good... Well, basically, analogy. what it boils down to is, in England, it's a, it's a euphemism. You know, the, the word trendy or fashionable basically means that you get in a magazine if you're a friend of the guy who's the editor. Mm. You know, and then you... It means you don't sell any records, but, you know, you're in the photos. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't have any sort of musical significance whatsoever, really. <laughs> That's what you do with the other thing as well, but you can't steam your meat. It's nicer. I don't, I don't mind. I'll go for the traditional Korean. Well, no, whatever it is we we're having. It's lots of vegetables as well. Pass on it, yeah. If you don't want to, we could do the other one. No, I don't mind. Because I mean, I've eaten anyway, so I'm not really. I guess now that you're starting to sell, you sort of have to almost incorporate these sort of elements into your... Energy. That's all right, as long as it's in proportion with the rest of the, you know, record buying public, not just... I mean, to start off in that kind of area, I think you limit yourself and you put a lot of people off because you're giving the impression you're aloof, elitist, whatever, and you, you don't want to include everyone in it. But I think just by talking to us three, you can tell that, you know, we're quite down to a sort of people and you know, music should be appreciated by whoever likes it. You shouldn't have to map out, well, I want this section of the community to listen to my music and, you know, I was going to use a swear word, but I can't think of the word, you know, something, the rest of them, bleak the rest of them. I mean, it, I think if you want to create classic music that's going to be remembered, then it needs more people to hear it, to, to make it memorable, really. Mm -hmm. Or to appeal to more people. Mm -hmm. You talked about staying in proportion with what you're doing now, but I don't quite follow that. Uh, what you're saying. Well, it's just the fact that if you go out of your way to alienate that sort of thing, like the fashionable person, then you're doing exactly what they're doing and what we're trying to avoid, which is not alienate anyone. I mean, I know it sounds like basically you're just trying to keep your market as big as you possibly can, but it's not a matter. I wouldn't. It wouldn't matter if you know the number of people in each area were smaller, as long as it's a cross section of people. I don't mind if the audience is big or small or anything, but as long as anyone is free to listen, you know, and they don't think, oh, this isn't my kind of music, then th that's what we're trying to do. And I think as much as we, the fashionable thing is a problem to get around because it, it stops people being interested, I think we wouldn't want to try and make a point that, you know, people who were fashionable couldn't listen to it or something. That's not what we're saying, really, you know. I think the whole meaning of pop music, i.e. popular music, has changed so much because it is geared very much these days to a very young teenage kind of market. And I think we'd like to be a bit more old-fashioned about it and, and just give, give it back its true meaning so it's kind of, you know, yeah. available to anyone. Yeah, so I mean, Frank, Frank Sinatra was always <coughs> considered pop music and things like that. I mean, it, yeah, it's true that really because it's become a sort of, it's become a category within a category. Which has got a bit of a dirty name, but I don't think there's any reason why it should have. You know, good pop music can be as good as anything. Is image important to you now? Um, personally, no. no. <laughs> Not really, no. I mean, I, so I, mean I, 
Andy and I probably are like we like different types of music, but the sort of things we really are interested in or go for are probably the sort of people who disreg almost disregard the image. And I mean, I, I mean, I suppose that's a little bit elitist in its way, but they they do what they do regardless, if you like. You know, it's, uh, it's weather report and yellow and things like that. You know, not really. I think it's just sort of uh, icing on the cake as far as they're concerned. <laughs> なんか、いろいろ分かりにくい。答えだったんだけど、そういうこと聞いて、あの、そういうポップミュージックに対してね、あの、どうこうかわからないというポップミュージックに対してさ、そう、それだからこそ面白いというふうに思うのか、それともな
It's like right. the production team, they just trail out. You know, like Jam and Lewis. It's like a very down market Jam and Lewis. You know, and they're, they're the same backing track all the time. They probably got, had a, about six singles in a row. Ooh, more than that. Weird. Stock Aitken and Waterman, but they do them. They don't. They don't. They Fox. Melon King. Oh, 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 Dead or Alive. Euro Disco. Yeah. Cowbells and. I've got a theory that they just turned them into one big disc and ethnics so that basically you can play all the records end to end and they just continue with you know but I mean it, I don't I don't it, it just doesn't achieve anything for me at all you know if that's the way pop music's going I think I'm, I'm I sort of keep out of the way just yeah you know I just let it go on and sort of carry on regardless I think we've been informed that we have until 7 o'clock I see you good awesome. uh, <laughs> uh, but I guess we're going to have to end this uh, pretty soon, so we'll try well, to we cram as much as possible. We could be a little bit late, Sam. We'd be, we'd be a little bit late. Cancel the restaurant. Not very, not too late. Keep going. Well, we don't want to. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, one reason he was asking about all the uh, questions about image and whatnot is because at the uh, the party the other night, uh, some place, something called Area. Yeah. Uh, you were. It's like he he was seeing what you guys were going through, and it seemed like uh, well, a lot of trouble and, uh, just to push a record. Um, what do you think? Uh, Something you I think with, some, like with something like that, it's because uh, we're here in Japan to do promotion, and I suppose to a certain extent we've kind of uh, had to succumb to the kind of media promotion type of thing, just because of the the nature of the way things are going at the, today, and especially with us, we're not complete as a band, and we have to get a lot of musicians in to complement what we do. Well, in order to create recreate something similar to what we do, and so the financial side of it has dictated the way we have to promote ourselves to a certain extent and so doing something like this just doing a small promotional visit to countries that would later like to tour in is kind of I suppose testing the water a bit or just uh, m making people aware of us before we'd come to do a tour because if we came here s straight <coughs> away to do a tour we maybe wouldn't uh, be able to get many people to come and see it it's strange really because I think it's one of those things, well, that thing the other night he was talking about, that if that was in England I would never consider doing it. But in, in a bizarre sort of way I find it an interesting experience because, partly because you don't really know what's going to happen when, when you turn up for something like that. I, mean, I find it in a way quite enjoyable because I always feel that you're probably not going to do that again, you know, so it's, it's just a bizarre experience really. I mean, it's certainly a talking point. <laughs> but maybe we'll be making mistakes by doing this that we may uh, regret later, but it's also um, very difficult when it's a country as far away as Japan and a culture so different. Uh, I think you do have to make some compromises to a certain extent because of, of the nature of you know, the way things actually get going in a country like this. Maybe it would be exactly the same as England, but I don't think it's quite the same here. <laughs> So you're taking it with a pretty flexible attitude. Yeah, I mean, you can quite enjoy it because it, really it was our first experience of Japanese people's reaction to you know when you talk to them and whatnot. But I mean that's always quite interesting because it's so different from anything in the West. You know, you'd be sort of being sneered at if you were doing that. I think. Um, <laughs> あの、when we're here, I want to be in the studio. When we're in the studio, sometimes I think oh, it'd be great to be in. But at the end of the day, I think I'd rather be doing that because that's what I do the best. Yeah. You know, I, I sort of whenever I get home, that's the thing that keeps me going. You know, it's just sitting there playing and putting things together. And you know, so I think 
first and foremost, that's the thing that I would do. But then also, you know, you need to come and see what people make of things. You know, just because I think you can become ridiculously self-indulgent if you just sit there and think, this is my view of things. You know, and really, you haven't got a view of things because you've not seen anything to inform your view. You know, but I think you can you can probably overdo. Each side. Yeah. A balanced diet. <laughs> a balanced diet. A balanced diet. Yeah. Yeah. Which is true. You know, it's, uh, I mean, we've been promoting for I know how long? Since uh, March. Yeah. Yeah. And really, I'd, I'd rather have done a month of promotion and then two months studio and then maybe another month. I think that they would have balanced each other a lot yeah. better. You know, but mm. that's the way it is. Mm. And how about you, Corinne? Are you a little more uh, flashy with these dour gentlemen? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, it's a bit different for Andy and Martin because Andy was in a certain ratio previously, and Martin's been in magazine and other bands, and they've both done extensive touring. But uh, I haven't really had much experience in that field, so I'm really enthusiastic about it. But I can uh, I can understand in a way why they're not quite so eager to do that because the creative process is actually in the writing, and and that's where you really have to think and. You know, it's uh, the most satisfying in a way to be to be able to create a, a really a good piece of music that you know it's, it's fulfilling. But and in some ways, I suppose touring, if you do too much of that, it, you're not really uh, pushing yourself that much because you're doing the same thing over and over again. But there is that certain edge to it because things can go wrong. But I, w I would say the same. I think just to keep things in perspective, if we could do equal amounts of each, it would uh, make us feel better. なんかもう三分しかないそうなんで、うん、えっ、ー、と二つのことを一緒に聞いてほしいんだけどね。うん、あのー、ちょっとさっきの話に戻るんだけど、うん、えっ、ー、と前マーチにインタビューした時にね、あのー、いやマーチさんにおしゃれにとんでもねえって話だったんだけど、もうここまでその企業のイメージとか、あのさっきのイズダンフォーライフとかね、ああいう企画とかあったりして、うんえー、そのイメージも固定してきたしね、ここまで来ると逆にあのー、そうとばかりに言ってられなくて、本当におしゃれにならないといけないんじゃないかという。そういうことを感じてしまうことはないかっていうのと、それから服のコーディネーションを誰に伝えるんですか。We have we've been given the three-minute sign here, so I'll ask you two questions here.、Uh, when I talked to you on the telephone,、uh, once back, you said、uh, this idea of people from Manchester being trendy is、uh, somewhat、uh, absurd.、Um, however, now I mean, it's, it's kind of gotten out of hand. You know, you've got this Japanese department store,、uh, Isetan, now wanting to sign you on as their As their new poster, as their, as their mascots there, which is you know the, the, the height of、uh, urban chic.、Um, it seems to be a, a matter of it no longer really being in your hands anymore.、Um, at least think, that's the way we would look at it. Yeah, I, I think it could very easily be in our hands at, at any given moment. But I think it's the case that part of the reason why it's absurd is because we quite enjoy the absurdity of it.、Mm. I think although we complain about it all the time and we say, look, this is completely ridiculous. At the end of the day, when you see those things happening, and they still happen, even when you've said it's absurd, that you 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 get a taste for it, and you get a taste for people com completely getting the wrong end of the stick. You know, it's it's kind of、uh, you can appreciate it for what it is then. You know, because you know it's a joke, <laughs> and the the bigger joke it gets, somehow in a perverse way, the more enjoyment you get out of it. You know, so I think if it all stopped, all that side of it, it, it would get a little bit dull. You know, because I think I likened it to saying. It's like the same people from Akron, Ohio, were trendy or something. I mean, it, it's like the thing of even the thing of travelling somewhere like here. We, we had this discussion with somebody a few weeks ago where, if, if we went home, you, you wouldn't really talk about it in a local pub because it's just such a sort of subject. You know, I mean, you'd be like the Lawrence Arabia of the,、uh, of the local. You know, it's, it's not. It's so, sort of frowned on really because you'd be seen as posing, even though you'd be got, you'd come over here to work. They wouldn't see it like that, you know. It's, it's that strange sort of attitude, which is、uh, interesting, though. Well, I mean, the one good part about it is the fact that you know it's、uh, basically saying you know anyone can, which, as far as I've seen, anything that says even you know some ugly guy with big ears and a guy with a big nose and a girl with big feet can still be fashionable. You know, it, it's just basically it's the same thing as the music, really. If, as long as it gives you some sort of optimism, and you know, you sort of, there's no way that. We'd ever be considered, you know, if we weren't doing what we're doing, nobody would come up to you and say, "Oh, do you want to be in an advert for something?" You know, so it's just that you can kid people. You know. Yeah, yeah but I mean, there's a total irony. Yeah, yeah maybe maybe not, 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 not for Karen, but I think you know you spend a lot of time on your own appearance, and, and you know you come from London and all. For you, I would imagine this is not something like、uh, completely、uh, like a ball from the blue. Well, it is really because I mean I, I think that. 
maybe, I don't know, I suppose appearances can give off the wrong impression, but to a certain extent, I always think people say, oh, you must spend so long thinking about your image, this, that and the other, but I mean, whatever job you're doing, it depends on what sort of person you are, but I think, you know, what you look like is how people perceive you, and, and I, you know, I used to work in, a, I've done lots of different jobs, but I think I've always taken a, a certain amount of care of my appearance, and especially if you're on display to the public, then uh, if you've got something in print or, you know, a, some film of you or something looking terrible, then it's, uh, you know, you've got that to live with because it's permanent evidence of it. So it's I think people will always make, you know, if you're in a position where they can use it, they'll, they'll build something up. Because, I mean, I know Karen was a nice looking girl before I started, but and probably people complimented her on her appearance, but I don't think anyone was going around saying, oh, this is the new leader in fashion before she started making records, you know, so it's... I think you have to keep a perspective about it, really. So. I'm a failed fashion designer, so I couldn't have been <laughs> very good at it. Were you behind the, the, the coordination of the clothing? Oh, not at all, no. Yeah. <laughs> I think I need a coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> and then now you're like wearing matching blazers or something. Oh, it's just coincidence. We just had oh. two white polo necks that were clean, so we thought we'd wear them and wear them. Nobody was behind that. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah. 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 And if you look, if you'd have got too close to them, you would have smelt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They weren't that clean. They weren't that clean. No, they were clean enough. <laughs> By the way, Zap is from Akron, Ohio, and they're very hip. Well, that's the thing, because no, Akron, Ohio was uh, was trendy in London, in England. That was a, when Devo came out. There. Everyone was talking. They had right. features oh, yeah. on me about it. I must have think of a new town. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Kansas? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a state, actually. Yeah. Oh, well, no, I would, I would say... Uh, no, Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. 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 Phoenix, I, I can enjoy it from a, a really perverse point of view. Mm -hmm. you know, I just think it's almost the part of being really funny that you can have 20 or 30 Japanese girls who scream if you shake hands with them. I mean, to me, it's usually people scream with horror, not with... Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, whatever you do, it's that whole kind of <laughs> that anti fashion syndrome. I mean, if you're presented to the public, no matter what you are, if you, if you couldn't give a toss what you look like, it, because you're there and presented to the media, that turns that into something... Well, it's it's not anti anymore because it's been presented as a positive yeah, it's thing. It's like if you've got a dirty jumper on, people decide that you've you've decided to make a statement about the dirty <laughs> jump. You know, I'm wearing this dirty jumper. And it's you know. Yeah, it's, that's, uh, there was one thing I remember in particular. We we got these leather jackets, and well, it's quite long story short, we we were done because we'd seen this jacket that we liked and somebody at the record company had one, so we decided to buy one each, and we got cheap versions of them the same price, you know, really nasty leather jackets, bike jackets. And I used to wear it at home and people used to say, that jacket's disgusting, you know, really used to go on about how nasty it was. And then after I'd worn it on top of the pops and, and a couple of other things, three of the same people asked me where you could buy them from and I thought, oh, come on, you know. So I'm currently trying to sell it. <laughs> so me, I got this piece of material to make a skirt out of once, and I didn't have time to make it. It was the first stop of the pops, the same thing. You think, oh, we're on top of the pops, you don't want to look terrible. And I didn't have time to make a skirt, so I tied it round in a knot. And everywhere I go, people go, where did you get that from? And it's, a, you know, from a market store, a cheap old bit of material. And I just think, oh, it's a fashion statement. Interesting idea, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, like we're getting the, you get the eye here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. 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 Th